里呀、啊？哪里？几点？The downtown East murder, which took place in October 2010, shocked Singapore. The country's glossy veneer as a peaceful and orderly society does little to shroud the occasional disorder lurking just beneath the surface. Singapore has long been reputed to be an orderly society. According to statistics by the United Nations, only 16 murders were recorded in 2011, the second lowest in the world for that year. Remarkable for a country with a population of more than five million. Despite Singapore's lawful image, there exists a group of deviants, gangs, and secret societies. Threatening to disrupt society's hard-earned order. Active since the 19th century, gangs and secret societies in Singapore have had a history older than the country itself. While some performed a marginal social role, offering a crutch to a large poverty-stricken immigrant population, the majority was mired in nefarious activity, inciting violence. And engaging in extortion and vices, hard-nosed legislation coupled with enforcement saw secret societies of Singapore's past crippled and largely eradicated. No longer the same clandestine groups they were back then. Today's secret societies are more attention-seeking and disorganized. Not only that, the profile of the modern-day gangster is also getting younger. Nineteen-year-old Darren Ng was from an upper middle-class family. I want to go to Japan. Darren's family was closely knit. He had loving parents who made it a point to organize annual family trips overseas in order to spend quality time with Darren and his older sister. With his daily routine revolving around school assignments, projects, and examinations, Darren led the typical life of a Singaporean student. Into his second year of polytechnic, and at the brink of entering the workforce, Darren had a promising future ahead of him. His mind, however, was rarely on his schoolwork. Growing up as a curious and sociable teenager, he became easily distracted and playful. And it was his curiosity that led him to fall into the wrong company of friends. <laughs> With this group of friends, distracted and aimless teenagers like him, Darren was frequenting entertainment hangouts, gallivanting, and constantly on the lookout for the next excitement. Darren soon formed an unbreakable bond with this group of friends, a brotherhood of sorts. And they called themselves the Phoenix Mountain Gang. In them, Darren found a sense of belonging and recognition. But more importantly, they were able to give him the thrill, the adrenaline rush that his boring life as a student was not able to do. Hi, Andy. Small part. Oh, 小心，谢谢大哥。Seemingly playful and frivolous activities soon crossed the line. Goaded by his gangmates, Darren was now testing his boundaries with the law. From my experience, I find that these people, when they're alone, I think they're quite docile. They don't go looking for trouble. They only look for trouble when they're in groups. They get this group courage, and then they start harassing people and. Going out looking for fights and all that. Darren saw his identity rooted in his place in the gang. 
and he was soon falling deeper into the traps of peer pressure. His parents, too, spotted some signs of deviance. Are you missing a bad company? Relax, Ma. It's just that do. I'm late to class. Though worried about what Darren might possibly be up to outside of home, his parents dismissed these telltale signs as merely a phase of uncertainty most teenagers go through. For surely their son, who often comes across as obedient and filial, knows the boundaries he has to draw. Unknown to his family, however, Darren was leading a double life. Subha Sanandan has defended many of Singapore's veteran gangsters. His years of experience in criminal law have enabled him to understand the gangster's psyche. Teenage gangsters to him are mere delinquents, rebels having neither cause nor courage. When they're alone, most of them are the cowards actually. They need this peer group to support them and give them this touch courage to go and attack people and boost their image. Like most teenagers, Darren had his own dreams and aspirations. He was passionate about music and had wanted to pursue a career in the music industry. On the fateful morning of the 30th of October 2010, Darren would set out for what was to be the last of his weekly guitar lessons. His music aspirations came to a screeching halt. Many of today's street gangs take on the names of secret societies of the past. While the name remains, Strict rituals and traditions often associated with the underworld activity are long gone. Teenage gangsters in Singapore today also do not have the same reasons and motivations to join a secret society as did the gangsters of yesteryear. Mostly all the people who are gangsters are poor people and they have no choice sometimes in some neighborhood. You have to join a gang because if you are not a member of a gang, you can be bullied by a lot of people, so you're forced to either choose this gang or that gang so that you can be safe. Unlike gangsters of the past, Gary came from a middle-income family. He lived a comfortable life, replete with all the material comforts of a pleasant middle-class household. Whatever Gary wanted, he had. Well, almost. Unlike his older siblings, who both excelled in school, Gary struggled academically. And his results translated into beatings at the hand of his exasperated father. Unable to find acceptance at home, Gary started to seek solace in a gang, which promised him protection and recognition. There's a certain element of prestige constructed by the gang members themselves. So vulnerable youths entering this arena, you know, feel like they have entered something special, something that is close to outsiders, and something that, you know, is, is prestigious because they have been specially picked up and invited. So therefore, that is the first sense of achievement, right? An accomplishment, an affirmation. Gary's perceived lack of love and security at home soon had him looking for support in all the wrong places. He found a ready substitute in the camaraderie and false sense of security in the company of his new so-called brothers. 有事情的時候是朋友在身邊,而不是家人。當時我就覺得朋友才是真正的在你身邊的人。這是在那時候開始學壞。
Gary started to get embroiled in gang fights. Violence and bloodshed became the way he showed allegiance to his newfound friends. Actually, Life in the gangs, as Gary had experienced it, soon became a torrid affair, a mishmash of brawling and unpredictable madness. Yet to the young hooligan, the violence he indulged in always seemed justified by false notions of honor, sacrifice, revenge. Then The autonomy Gary had as a gang member boosted his morale. For once he felt powerful, a stark contrast to the inferiority he experienced back home. Fortunately for Gary, the madness lasted just two years, until it wore him down. Jaded by the daily fights and the trepidation of running away from the police, Gary started to rethink about his life choices. And it was his mother who helped turn things around for him. Feed 就是說我的哥哥又在外國,我姐姐又自己花自己有一天他也是嫁出去,但我就怎麼辦,不過他們真的有一天老了話,那時候我就開始慢慢想。While Gary made the decision to walk away from his wayward life before it was too late. Darren's foray into secret society activity would end in the cruelest fashion. The prelude to this end began with the all too familiar staring match in a very public place. In recent years, Singapore has seen a spate of gang-related violence involving youths. While society's safety is jeopardized with the presence of youth gangs, the consequences go beyond just that. Every youth who strays is a tremendous cost to the society, not just because of safety concerns, and therefore we have to invoke more law enforcement, but also because it is a very tragic loss, given that, you know, we are a population that is graying and with our sustained low TFR, every baby is an important asset you know, to, the, to the community, to the nation. The fateful settlement talk between two gangs, one of them Darren Ung's, was organized on the morning of the 30th of October, 2010.
哎、欸、，sorry brother， 我不是要跟你找麻烦的。不懂哦、啊，哎、欸，你就要小心一点呐、啊。OK OK， 不要伤和气，可以吗 ？No one could have foreseen the dreadful outcome. Especially since the proceedings appeared amicable in the beginning. Hello. Hello, 大。全部 set 得了。什么 set？ 跟他们呐。你等我来哦。哦，知道了。The events that were to unfold would lead to one of the most brutal episodes of gang violence in recent Singapore history. With no idea on how the settlement talks were going, on the other side, members of the two gangs indulged in the inane ritual of an aggressive staring match. To us, it is senseless. To them, it's very important because it's a matter of saving face, not losing ground. That's very important for a gang. I should not lose ground. I should not lose face. So if I let you go on staring at me and do nothing about it, I'm losing face, and I cannot afford it because the next time people will say this gang we can stare at them, you no, know, we can spit at them. They won't do anything, lah. So you do not want to have that sort of reputation. So you got to react. Look what? My eyes are mine. Can you see if I can? Hey. 发生什么事？他们要找我的麻烦，跟我的朋友找麻烦，要被打。你找什么？喂，别打队。喂，刚才不是上大了，要打，打就打，要打就打。A fight quickly erupted, morphing into a running battle. The brutal nature of attacks sent chills among the crowd of onlookers. Many of whom were simply too shocked to interfere. There was no motivation actually. It was something that happened quite suddenly, in the sense that one member of one group had some problem with the deceased group, and uh, they tried to try and settle the matter, but it did not. It was not settled. In fact, it escalated into a fight when the dogs did not. Succeed. There was a fight, and uh, they chased the deceased in public and slashed him in front of so many people. Very blatant violence, you know. Complete disregard for the law, I think. Darren, totally outnumbered. Suffered 28 injuries on his head, neck, chest, and limbs. He died in Changi General Hospital five hours later. The fatal blow was a slash at his neck, which led to massive blood loss. In the aftermath, pro-death penalty advocates in Singapore had called for the hanging of the four main culprits, who were promptly arrested. Feelings had run high as the brutal and sustained strike took place at Downtown East. A place of merriment, and witnessed by scores of little children petrifying them and their loved ones. The fact that the assault took place in full view of a crowd on a Saturday evening showed clearly the blatant disregard the offenders had for the law. Despite this, Subas, who was the defence counsel, pleaded for leniency from the courts. We were not saying that what they did was minor or something. A life has been lost. It's a tragedy. Every time you lose a life in this sort of thing, it's a tragedy. But the life is lost by sending them in for a long period of imprisonment. You're not bringing back the life. One life has already been destroyed. And if you put these young people in prison for a long time, you're also destroying their life, they're adding on to the tragedy, and that is something that we should avoid in criminal law. We must give people a chance, and that's what we are arguing about. Five gang members eventually faced the most serious charges of culpable homicide. All were convicted and served with lengthy jail terms with caning. 
Seven others were charged with rioting. This incident prompted the government to step up its efforts on the clamping down on youth gangs. A new youth guidance program was also implemented in 2011 to reach out to at-risk youths who might be more vulnerable to joining gangs. Firstly, it must be taught to them that they do not have to belong to any gang to be considered important. No? You know, these are some of the things that they must be educated to. That you do not need the support of gangsters to exist. You know, you got to drill this into the, into the mind. It's a mindset, and an attitude that has to be changed. If there are lessons to be learned from this tragedy, it ought to be that nothing good ever stems from youthful infatuation with violence. Perhaps no one understands this as well as Gary does. With his gangster days well behind him, it now seems clear to him that the recalcitrant life he chose was doomed from the outset. Adolescents would do well to learn early that gangs have no rightful place in society. And before one even counts one's friends, it is critical to know if one can count on them to steer clear of trouble in wholesome friendships. Thank you.